Good morning and uh, welcome here this morning to Morning Prayer on Saturday the 15th of January. Oh, get rid of that. So I was just cleaning the um, uh, cleaning the camera. It all looks a bit weird today. I don't know whether that's always like this. I don't know if it's any different for you, but um, perhaps it's a bit dark, I don't know. Uh, welcome on this uh, very, again, crisp um, winter's morning. I hope this finds you well in good hearts and in good spirits on this Saturday morning. I'm not sure what you've got planned for today. Uh, you maybe plan to go up to meeting point a little bit later um, from 10 o'clock. At, St. at South Marston, you'll be most welcome there. Ooh. People got a clause caught in my leg, then caught in my finger, and um, she's a bit old now, and I think she finds her balance just a little bit difficult on occasions. Oh, she's not happy with me at the moment. Definitely not very happy with me. Hey. Hey. Sorry, I should be my friend again later when I feed her. So, South Master meeting point this morning at 10 o'clock, 10 till 12. Um, be good to see you there if you're there. Uh, a reminder that tomorrow morning we have a team service, uh, a joint service at the Methodist Church on Ermine Street, and that's at half past 10. So, again, you'll be most welcome there. It's to celebrate the start of um the week of prayer for christian unity and that's what they call it i'm going to go and turn the light on it might be too dark i don't know if that's made any difference whatsoever or perhaps it's just my glasses steamed up i'm going to use the liturgy for ordinary radicals today which you'll find on the link which i put on the on the um description I don't see that, so uh, I'm not sure whether you can see it as well. Uh, but hopefully you would have seen it as you, at some point on there. At some point this morning, I might even start to make sense. There's always a hope. going to begin again with some words from Julian of Norwich. These ancient words, and this is from a book which I think I used in the first lockdown uh, called All Will Be Well. For just as our bodies are clothed in garments, our flesh enclosed by our skin, our bones wrapped in flesh, our hearts centred in our body. So are we, spirit and flesh, clothed head to toe in the goodness of God. But this metaphor hardly does justice, for all these things will decline and wear out. God's goodness, however, is everlasting and is incomparably nearer to us than our very flesh. Our beloved wishes that our spirits might cling to him with all our strength and never let go of his goodness. No mere creature can ever imagine just how dearly, sweetly and tenderly our creator loves us. So with his grace and aid let us spiritually rest in contemplation, forever marvelling at the high, surpassing, single-minded, immeasurable love that our good Lord extends to us. Doing so, we dare ask our lover for whatever we wish, because our wills naturally seek only God. And God, in turn, desires only us. And never can we stop 
the desiring and longing until he is ours in the fullness of bliss. Above all else, this fond gazing upon our Creator makes us aware of our own insignificance. Fill us with awe, in hum awe and humility and with abounding love for our neighbour. It's a thought that Julian encourages us to have all through the day. So are we spirit and flesh, clothed head to toe in the goodness of God. As we begin today's worship in using this liturgy, we recall on January the 15th, 1929, Martin Luther King Jr. was born in Atlanta, Georgia. In celebration of his contribution to the civil rights movement, the United States Congress made the third Monday in January a national holiday in 1983. While we celebrate Dr. King's contribution to America, we also remember his insistence that the church exists as the conscience of the state, conscious conscience of the state, speaking prophetically to those in power. We honour Dr King with all Americans, but we also remember that the sermon he intended to preach the Sunday after his assassination was titled, Why America May Go to Hell. Mm, sobering thought. But a man we remember this day, born this day, and 93 years ago, no, blah, 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 93 years ago, a man clothed in the goodness and love of God. I think you may have forgiven me. Maybe. As I mentioned yesterday to uh, Christine Sue, uh, you, I am the last, I am the last person anyone needs to apologise, apologise to for being late to a Facebook service. In fact, you're just on time. Oh Lord, let my soul rise up to meet you as the day rises to meet the sun. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and will be forever. Amen. Come, let us bow down and bend the knee. Let us kneel before the Lord our Maker. The song that's... Uh, that they have in the liturgy today is called We Shall Overcome and uh, usually they have the recording of it but they don't today I'm not going to attempt to sing it because I only know one line uh, and I know that uh, there are more there's more than one line we join together and we say Lord if we are extremists may we be extremists for love Words from Psalm 78 Hear my teaching, O my people. Incline your ears to the words of my mouth. I will open my mouth in a parable. I will declare the mysteries of ancient times, that which we have heard and known, and what our forefathers have told us. We will not hide from their children. He, walked, he worked marvels in the sight of their forefathers, in the land of, in the land of Egypt, in the field of Zoan. He split open the sea and let them, them pass through. He made the waters stand up like walls. He led them with a cloud by day and all the night through a glow of fire. 
Lord, if we are extremists, may we be extremists for love. Still going to use the lectionary today, the reading set aside for today. And if you wish to read the Old Testament reading, um, excuse me, if you wish to read the Old Testament reading, it is from Genesis chapter 6, verse 1 to 10. And it's set in the scene from Noah. We are going to turn to Matthew chapter 22, starting at verse 34. When the Pharisees heard that Jesus had silenced the Sadducees, they gathered together and one of them, a lawyer, asked him a question again to test him. Teacher, which commandment in the law is the greatest? He said to him, You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind. This is the greatest and first commandment, and the second is like it. You shall love your neighbour as yourself. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. Now while the Pharisees were gathered together, Jesus asked them this question. What do you think of the Messiah? Whose son is he? They said to him, Son of David. He said to them, How is it then that David by the Spirit calls him Lord, saying, The Lord said to my Lord, Sit at my right hand until I put your enemies under your feet. If David thus calls him Lord, how can he be his son? No one was able to give him an answer nor from that day did anyone dare to ask him any more questions. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. John Inge Ing, writes, This passage which includes Jesus' summary of the law will be very familiar to most Christians. The two commandments to love God and to love your neighbour. To love God comes from Deuteronomy chapter 6 verse 5 and to love your neighbour from Leviticus 19 verse 18. They appear separately in the Hebrew scriptures although there is some precedent in pre-Christian Judaism for bringing them together. Jesus seems to have done something new in referring to them as a summary of all the requirements of the law. Expressed together, they are the hallmark of, a health, of healthy Christianity. When one or other takes priority to the, when one or other takes priority to the detriment of the other. Excuse me. Let me begin that sentence again. When one or other takes priority to the detriment of the other, trouble ensues. Exclusive concentration on the first leads to a um, pietism that tends to ignore the plight of those around us who are made in the image of God. A sex-like separation from the world that forgets that in serving the least of humanity we are serving Christ. Concentration on the second to the detriment of the first, to what used to be called a social gospel approach that reduces the church to just another agent of social responsibility. Excuse me. Again, let me read that sentence once more. Concentration on the second to the detriment of the first leads to what used to be called a social gospel approach that reduces the church to just another agent of social responsibility. The church and the gospel flourish when attention is given to both. They belong together. Each is dependent on the other. The one flows from and to the other same is true for us as individuals. Do we neglect God because we're too busy worrying about our fellow human beings? Or do we neglect our fellow human beings because we're too busy worrying about God? Let us pray. 
Heavenly Father, at the Jordan you reveal Jesus as your Son. May we recognise him as our Lord and know ourselves to be your beloved children through Jesus Christ, our Saviour. Amen. Lord, if we are extremists, may we be extremists for love. Martin Luther King preached, I have a dream that one day every valley shall be exalted, every hill and mountain shall be made low, that rough places will be made straight and the glory of the Lord shall be revealed and all flesh shall see it together. Your kingdom come, your will be done. We come to our time of intercession, our time of prayer. to turn to John Pritchard for some guidance today. And to use uh, the litany of Jesus um, I think this is what I used last week yeah. I think I used the litany of life last week didn't I this is the litany of Jesus and this litany focuses on the many names given to Jesus in the Bible and it says here it allows our prayers to engage with those dimensions of human experience which are echoed in the life of Christ. Christ, word made flesh, God made flesh. So it's from very short prayers. And when I say Jesus, sorry, when I say Lord, hear us, please could you respond with Lord, graciously hear us. Jesus, word of the Father, speak for those who have no voice and stand by powerless while others play with their lives. Lord, we think of those outcast, looked down upon, those who sometimes we ignore, those who are put down by those around them. Help us to lift them, Lord, to be their voice, just as you spoke for them. Help us be your voice. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. Jesus, child of Bethlehem, remember now those children who are born to struggle, whose mothers have no milk, and whose fathers struggle for bread. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us.
Jesus, refugee in Egypt. Remember those who have been terrorised out of their homes. For those who run in fear. For those travelling across oceans and seas. For those trying to sing their own song in a foreign land. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. Jesus Carpenter of Nazareth, remember now those who work with their hands but see their jobs being taken over by computers and technology. For those who are looking for work, for those who fear for their jobs and their livelihoods. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. Jesus, teacher of Galilee, remember now those children who think they cannot learn that success is always for someone else, that theirs is a lost cause. We lift before you all those young people who are on our hearts, those whom we love, those whom we care about, those whom we treasure and pray for. We ask that they may see your beauty and understand that they are fearfully and wonderfully made. Lord Jesus, teacher of Galilee, we pray for those who work in our schools, colleges, universities, nurseries and preschools, for those who are looking to inspire, to encourage, to nurture and develop the young people of our communities. striving to help them get good foundations in this world. We pray for them this day. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. Jesus, friend of the poor, be a friend to the invisible poor in our neighbourhood. Those we never notice, the empty and lonely ones, the exhausted and silent ones. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. Jesus, healer of the sick, remember now our broken humanity and touch with your tender love all those who cannot trust their bodies to be whole. Just finding the things I need to find. Okay. We lift before you, dear Father, those who are struggling in body, mind, or spirit. And I name just some of them, and on your hearts, you might like to name them as well. Addie and her family. William and his family, Linda, Jordan, Wendy and her family, Jim, Joe and their family, John, Liz, Dave and the family, Daniel, Peter, Alvin and their family, 
Mary, Martina, Trordor and their family, Martin, Jeff and Hilary, Esme, Peter and Bridget, Greg, Stephanie and their family, Anne, Angela, Ali and Mia, Christine, George, Averill, Barry and Helen. Lord hear us, Lord graciously hear us. Jesus, light of the world, remember now those whose sight is growing dim and who fear the dying of the light. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. Jesus, door of the sheepfold, remember now those other sheep of yours who feel that the church is not for them because they are not good enough, or cannot understand the language, or do not know the entry code. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. Jesus, bread of life, take us, pray over us, break us open and share us out that the church may feed and fill the world with your generosity. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. Jesus, prophet of Jerusalem, speak judgment to our complacency, cry aloud to our disobedience, that the manipulator, the torturer, the abuser, the destroyer may turn back to your ways of justice and peace. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. Jesus, man of prayer in Gethsemane, Remember now those who are overwhelmed by the prospects before them and are on their knees with nowhere else to go. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. Jesus, victim on the cross, Remember well those who hang there beside you, martyrs and fools, heroes and villains, victims of murderous regimes, and people who were in the wrong place at the wrong time. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. Jesus, risen in the garden, bring us to the terror and beauty of your risen presence, that we may be an Easter people of unshakable hope. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. Jesus, ascended Lord, work through and watch over our bewildered society, that the kingdom of this world may become the kingdom of our God and of his Christ. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. Jesus, Lord of all, Son of righteousness, rock of ages, Lamb of God, living water, true vine, day spring, Messiah, Lord and King, come again, come again in glory. Even so, come, Lord Jesus. We have 
this prayer this morning. Get there eventually. Lord, as we wake from another night's slumber, we are reminded that your dreams are given to us and not merely conjured up by our imaginations. Help us to understand both that your dreams come at a price and that their rewards are immeasurable. Amen. And as our Saviour taught us, so we pray using whichever version, uh, or whichever version is your preference. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. And may the peace of the Lord Christ go with you, wherever he may send you. May he guide you through the wilderness and protect you through the storm. May he bring you home rejoicing at the wonders he has shown you. May he bring you home rejoicing once again into our doors. Thank you for sharing this time with me and uh, for the time uh, shared this week. Uh, as Alvin said, she's on leave um, from tomorrow onwards. Uh, or after tomorrow um, so um, morning prayer um, I have a, a very very important meeting which starts bang on at half past nine um, um, or an appointment I should say nothing to worry about but it's one of those things where uh, I can't can't cancel so um, I've got that half past nine I will do a morning prayer on Monday but it will be uh, very short it will probably just be um, yes short um, well it will be short but there will be morning prayer on Monday and then uh, through the week as well as I say I hope to see some of you at uh, meeting point at some point this morning and uh, tomorrow at uh, the Methodist Church at half past ten but in the meantime May the peace of the Lord Christ go with you wherever he may send you. May he guide you through the wilderness and protect you through the storm. May he bring you home rejoicing at the wonders he has shown you. May he bring you home rejoicing once again into our doors. God bless you and keep you. See you soon. Have a great day.